President Trump has railed against European regulation when he spoke to Davos. Many executives on the continent say they share his concern. Leaders in the tech industry are warning that overregulation on AI makes the union less competitive. And as the US announces new initiatives and investment, Europe needs to catch up. Christian Klein is with me, the CEO of SAP. A lot of initials, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Do you think that Europe has got its act together sufficiently? And I don't just mean on tariffs, I mean on the whole question of competitiveness. No, we don't have our act together. And I mean, when you look at Washington, what happened this week, I mean, you know, there were some bold decisions on deregulation. And when you look at Europe, I give you one example, Richard, very practical. We have an EU AI Act done with all good intentions, but you know, we have one AI Act now more. If the 27 member states also have their own AI Acts, you overregulate and then you kill innovation before it actually, you know, Brings, before we bring it to life. Right, but you, you of course, are already large, quite, quite large in the United States. It's yes. a large part of the company. Uh, you are not likely probably to suffer the tariffs that will come in. Uh, it would be difficult to do it in, in mm. a sense. But many of your company, of your clients and your customers are now worried about manufacturing in the US, tariffs, tariffs, tariffs. Yeah, that's true, uh, but let's see, I mean, it's, too oh, early to tell, I would say. There we go, the European uh, mantra, bark worse than its bite, let's wait and see, yeah. time will tell. Yeah, time will tell, and, and honestly, I mean, when, when I look at our business and our customers' business, we are running the supply chains of many, many multinationals. I mean, there is no doubt that the, the, the supply chains are really dependent on each other, and we absolutely need global trade. I mean, and there is so much dependencies, and I really trust on our political leaders that we will figure that out. One way or the other. Right. Now, on this program this afternoon, or just now, we heard the German finance minister saying that Germany needs deep structural reforms, the sort of which we've not seen since Gerhard Schroeder's time. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not he will be around in a few months to do it is, is, is not necessarily the point. You'd agree with him. There does need to be that reform. He's absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, look, when you look at the German economy and also take uh, digitization, I mean, when you travel through Germany, I mean, and, you know, you, you see our public administration. I mean, there is, you know, there are ideas behind, you know, really, you know, making sure that everything, you know, all kinds of approvals for energy, for the grids, it takes too long. Yeah, and th that is only one example. But so is, are the German people ready for the sort of change that needs to take place? I, I would say there is now a big wake up call. I mean, you see this, the status of our economy, you see what is happening in the US. And I feel the sense of urgency is now there, but you know, change now needs to happen. Right now, well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm just going to lean forward here. Mm -hmm. you, you probably may not have seen this. Is the Draghi report? I know this script really well. We have a drinking game, by the way. Yeah, uh, yeah every, because every European politician is talk, mentions the Draghi report. Mm -hmm. So every time you, you have to have a drink next time. Um, yeah. The problem with the Draghi report mm -hmm. is it needs to be implemented. Yeah, it's so far only a piece of paper. Yeah. Do you have confidence that they will be able to do that? You know, when, I, when you would have asked me this question uh, six months ago, my confidence would be rather low. Now, things have changed. And the sense of urgency I just talked about clearly also arrived in Brussels. So I, my confidence actually increased. That's a lot of this will also be now executed. Mark Benioff on this program talks about AI. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you've got your own AI and yes. on a heavily into AI. Mm -hmm. But this idea of human labor and AI labor, yes. can the two complement each other? I've no doubt that they're going to have to. Yes. But who's going to lose? I, I would say, look, I mean, what kind of options do you have? When you look at SAP and how software development will change, I mean, there's no doubt that 80% of the coding will be done in the future by AI powered coding tools. Uh, but what is the option of not doing it? And so, but the software, the profile of our software developers will change, but it will not disappear. So I absolutely believe, you know, it will come together, but job profiles will change. So enablement training is key. Choose your color. I would say green. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that's too much green. Come over here, sir. What the next four years in one word? Yeah. I would actually go for growth. Ooh. We need growth in Europe more than ever. You need growth and your growth potential, perhaps. I, I, that, that is also true. But I, I'm more optimistic. I would say we will be back in growth in latest in two years. I'm very grateful to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having thanks me, Richard. Thank you very much.